Alright. So we do now have the book in stock. Yay! It's here. Hooray, hooray. Yes. You also get a digital download. It comes with a little card. Yes, and the password's on the back, which you can't see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we now have the Steam Tokyo book. It's in Japanese, don't forget, but it is so cool. It's got great graphics and it covers Circuit Python and Circuit Playground Express. So if you want to pick one up, please do to support the author. Okay, next up. Coming soon, this presence. This is the main board that actually houses the chip itself and the QSPY flash. And uh, you would attach this to whatever you wanted it to control. So this is the kind of the brain of the board. And it's got a micro USB. It's got a USB serial converter. Um, it doesn't have native USB. Uh, and then now support Circuit Python. That's what we're talking about. Yes, it supports Circuit Python. Yeah. And then next up. Yeah, you put it on this. That's right. So this the next step, this is the um, holder board. So yeah. this board um, also has an SD card slot. It has a little connector that you, you know, your SD connector you plug in this presence into. And it makes Arduino compatible. Um, this is uh, cool if you want to use it with Arduino shields or Arduino compatible shields. Okay. And there's also a camera. There's just a camera that comes with it. Um, there is some, uh, in Arduino at least, there's visual recognition stuff and camera yeah. stuff you can use. So it plugs into the main board. You Show see it on that? the overhead. Yeah, we do have one that we purchased. Um, again, these are coming soon. But yes, this is a little main board yeah. and it has an antenna. I think it's just cool because, you know, I, a million years ago, I used to work with Sony on a lot of things. Their stuff's always so beautiful. And uh, it's just kind of nice to see something from Sony and also our code now running on it with yes. um, not only our Arduino libraries, but of course they did a special effort to get CircuitPython to run on it. Actually, sorry, no, that does have native USB because they got teeny USB running on this, so I'm, I'm mistaken about that. But um, yes, it has uh, a camera that you can plug in, you can plug into these headers, use the main board. Uh, so kind of an interesting uh, combination, but very powerful. Uh, it's like a multi-core chip. Uh, from Sony, we'll have more about this when we get more than one in stock, including, like we said, a guide on yeah. how to run CircuitPython with it. Next up. Um, an update to our Micro LiPo series. Uh, we had Micro LiPo A, Micro B, uh, Mini B, now USB C. USB C is here, uh, and we're getting pretty good at USB C connector handling. Um, this Micro LiPo, you know, basically you plug in USB C into one end light point to the other it charges it when it's done the done LED lights up so you know um, we made a little update to this one we added the data line so D minus and D plus are brought out people have asked for that it's a common request so if you plug into the USB C here and have a battery you'll get the five volts data lines and battery lines that you can use in your project that could be handy so you only have one USB C connector or alternatively you can give it five volts from your project uh, default charge rate is 100 milliamps, so it's safe for everything. Uh, if you solder close the pointy jumper, you'll get 500 milliamps. Straightforward, easy to use, and uh, now you don't have to worry about plugging the USB cable backwards because it works either way. Okay, what if I want to play two like make code games together? Can I do that now? I'm glad you asked. I can do yes. That now. One of the things that we did, we did a little trick on the fifth pin, which is the fourth pin on a USB micro B connector, is the ID pin. Uh, we connected that to digital 13 on um, both the Pi Badge and the Pi Gamer, um, and uh, on the Pi Badge LC as well. And so what happens is you get a cable that has the ID line connected through from one to the other, you can use that as a JackDAC pin. JackDAC is the protocol that MakeCode Arcade uses to communicate, yeah, totally. and this is a cable. You could also use this cable for um, general purpose micro USB on the go stuff, but some USB hosts don't like that the ID pin is not connected to ground, so just be aware of that. Yeah. Sometimes they're like, oh, it needs to be grounded for okay. us to work. Okay, got a couple screens. Um, yeah, some people have asked for replacement screens. Maybe they damage your screen or they want to use some of the screens that we know and love. This is the 1.54 inch uh, TFT 240x240 ST7789. Uh, really love the screen. It's IPS. And the connector is bottom contact, which means that you can get a flip top connector, which is, um, I think, much easier to use than the pull out tab connectors. So that are, those are available now. We also have the capacitive touch version of our 2.8 inch TFT. We've had the resistive touch for like a couple years and we kind of forgot to put in the cap touch one. Um, but this is handy. You would use a 50 pin connector to connect to it. The capacitive touch is a focal tech FT. 
6206 are compatible um, and the I squared C and interrupt lines come through on the 50 pin connector. So it's like, you know, some of the pins that are unused for the display. Okay, the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, and the community, all the people in costumes is this. Yes, well, you can really hear the people yelling in the parade outside. Yeah. Um, yes, finally, the STM32 F405 Feather is out. Uh, we had signups, we notified everyone, and we sold out, but we're making more. So fast, we made like 200, and they went fast. Um, this is our star new feather. It is, as we said, the STM32 F04. It's a 168 megahertz Cortex M4 from ST. Uh, this is our first ST micro feather, um, and it's got some nice goodies which I'll show off. First off, it's a feather, so it's feather compatible. Uh, it's 3.3 volt logic. It has all the pins. ST takes flight. It takes this flight. This headline writes itself. There's two DACs, A0 and A1. Uh, lots of ADC, so A0 through A5 are ADC. You've got SPI here, I squared C. You are, uh, there's no AREF on this pin, so you get two 3.3 volt pins. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Uh, ground, reset pin, enable battery, which is the battery voltage, USB, which is the five volt from here. Uh, digital IO, five, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Of these, I think the first four have um, PWM. Actually, the only pins that don't have PWM pretty much are a couple of the ADC pins and 11, 12, 13. I squared C as well. We put a two megabyte SPI flash chip on here, so for CircuitPython use, or for everyday use if you want to access uh, a bunch of memory on chip without having to plug in an SD card. Uh, it's two megabytes on there. And then we had a little space over here, so we put a quick Stemma QT connector. And so for example, here's an upcoming uh, little mini uh, GPS, which has I squared C connectivity. And uh, you see here, this is the, our classic OLED feather wing um, on top here with buttons and it's printing out the output from the GPS. There's no connectivity inside here so you can't see the location but you can see data coming out from the GPS. Uh, there's also a NeoPixel reset button circuitry, 3.2 kilohertz, uh, 32.768 kilohertz crystal, 12 megabyte, uh, 12 megahertz uh, main crystal which is used to, to clock it up and then uh, charge LED and uh, pin 13 LED and I'm gonna unplug this to show off the bottom. On the bottom, we have a SD card and the SD card is connected to the SDIO lines. And we also have a non-placed um, SW connector. So we, to program this, we recommend using the boot zero method, which means you take the B0 pin, um, connect it to 3.3 volts, which is like over here. Press the reset button and it'll boot into the built-in ROM bootloader, which has USB uh, DFU, and that's really easy. So that's a great way to upload uh, MicroPython or CircuitPython or even Arduino to it. Um, but some people like to program through SWD, in which case you'll have to either solder on this connector or solder to these tabs to get SWD. Um, we did not bring out the SWD pins because uh, I think most people are going to use the built-in bootloader and um, for CircuitPython and MicroPython, you, you pretty much never have to upload. Well, so much fast, so data. Um, and yeah, so for this, you can use uh, CircuitPython. We have some basic support going for CircuitPython. Not absolutely everything is supported, but we have digital IO, SPI, I squared C, uh, UART analog and uh, input and output. Uh, we're still working on UART and PWM is still a little bit in progress. So that's very exciting. Um, and then you can use it with MicroPython because it's the same chip as the Pi board. Uh, so if you uh, check it out, we have submitted a PR to MicroPython to add support for this chip. You can also use it in Arduino. We have also a PR to STM Duino for support for this chip. And it actually works pretty well. Um, STM Duino, almost everything we tried uh, worked out quite well um, with it. Uh, the only thing it doesn't have yet is auto reset for the bootloader, but that's an open issue and they'll hopefully fix that soon. So this is a little bit early um, for this feather. I'll say it's not great for people who, this is their first feather. This is for people who are like, oh, I've used feather, I've used my controllers. I'm kind of comfortable with the different ways that you program them. And I would yeah. like to try out the STM32. I'd say if you're really into something like MicroPython, but you like the feather form factor, this is for you. This is good. Or if you really just want 168 megahertz, this is our yeah. fastest feather. Um, it's faster than the uh, SAMD51. 
And if you want to use this with um, STM32 IDE, the, the, you know, the Cube IDE, and get direct access to you know, the STM HAL, uh, this is also an excellent uh, platform because a lot of people tend to use the Nucleo or Discovery boards, and they're amazing and they're great, but they're not Feather compatible. And with this, you get plug and play support with Feathers and with Quick and Stemma QT. Amazing products. What's the new product recap? Yep. New, 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 new. We have the CircuitPython Tokyo Steam book in stock. Don't forget, it's in Japanese, but it's super cool. Python and CircuitPython. Uh, CircuitPython and Circuit Playground. Um, we have this Sony Spresence boards coming soon. Sony Spresence main board, uh, adapter board that gives you Arduino shield compatibility, and also a camera. Plug all these things together, and you have a super board that does everything. The micro lipo with USB-C uh, is ready for the next generation of USB connectors. You can charge your lipo batteries very easily uh, using a USB-C cable. If you would like to have co-op or competition games on MakeCode Arcade using PyBadge or PyGamer, this sync cable uh, for the micro USB port will give you jack DAC compatibility so you can play against or with each other using the MakeCode Arcade uh, Player 1, Player 2 blocks. We have some replacement or new screens if you'd like to use these screens, the 1.54 inch 240 by 240 and the 2.8 inch 320 by 240 with capacitive touch. Both are lovely screens. And the start of the show is the STM32F405 Feather. It's 168 megahertz Cortex M4 from ST. Uh, thanks to ST and DigiKey for supporting this project. This was amazing to uh, bring up a new chip in CircuitPython. Now, new products. <laughs>